and also handle all your cable trays. Uh, let's take a look at ePlan, how to actually process this, and you will see. So, um, of course, in ePlan, you draw your schematics as usual, and you uh, assign your different wires or cables that will run from, of course, uh, most of the time a terminal strip out to a sensor, individual wires, cables. So you can see we have different ways of showing these cables. And in some cases, you may actually know the length of the cable, but in most cases, you do not know the length of the cable. The cable actually will be determined by the field system. So how does that work? First of all, uh, before I actually uh, move on, I want to check something uh, within the terminals because within each terminal, we have to define a terminal strip definition. So if those terminal strip definitions are not there, one easy way to do it is simply by running the pull-down menu, project, data, terminal strip, and correct. Now, while correcting, what it does, it actually adds all the missing terminal strip definitions and this will add throughout your uh, project these terminal strip definitions. They will help you, instead of placing each terminal individual, you will only have to drag and drop that terminal strip onto your overview or your topology page. So let's create one of those topology pages. You create that new page. It's a new type, topology. It comes actually fit with the field system. So technically it's a field overview or a field uh, layout of your cable trays and all your sensors or motors and whatever is actually placed out there. Typically when you draw this you uh, like to draw it in a one-to-one -one scale so what's important here is to pick a plot frame that matches the size of your paper. So if you do have an A size paper I suggest and recommend you actually choose an A size paper and of course, you can imagine if you print on A size, you will have to apply a scale of 1 to 100 or 1 to 200 to actually be able to fit a complete plant on here. So let's see here. This was an imported DXF DWG that I imported. And this is actually a plant overview. Some of my uh, friends sent and gave me. And uh, here you can actually see the graphics of a uh, complete plant. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The plant is actually bigger than the page I want to print on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the area that I'm interested in in my plot frame area. Now this will of course uh, place the graphics inside this area. And once this is done, I can actually use the, uh, an interesting technique on the layer side to define all these graphical layers that I added and define them as background layers. Now when you define them as background layers, what happens is you can work within ePlan without really affecting any of these graphics. You can't move them, you can't really select them. They are just basically there as a background. Now my intention was to concentrate on this area here. I'm just going to make a circle very quickly. This is actually the area I'm going to work in this is where I'm going to add some sensors uh, from my schematics. So technically, uh, the first step here is to open the device navigator. And from within the device navigator, I'm going to place these proximity switches. So when I drag and drop, what I have to ensure first is to see if while I can drag and drop, it switches over to these topology symbols. If you don't have the topology symbols assigned in this setting here, you can right mouse click, click on that setting, and you can pick the right topology symbol file that you need. Depending on the scale of your overview, if you have a scale of 1 to 20, I recommend the M20. A scale of 1 to 50, I recommend the M50. And a scale of M100 will actually uh, be perfect for uh, a one to, 1 to 100 uh, scale, as I just have it here on that particular drawing. So now I can actually drag and drop, and what happens is here you have a um, representation to represent the proximity switch. So you actually go in this one-to-one -one drawing that was provided by the mechanical guys, and you position the different proximity switches in whatever areas you actually need them. So you put them as close as possible to the real position where they would actually be on, on, the, uh, on the machine itself, so you align yourself carefully here 
and you have to drag and drop it for each of these individual uh, devices. And when you're finished, of course, you will see every time you place one of these, if you open the navigator a little bit further, I'm going to show you when I have positioned the last one here, the 522. So it's basically just a drag and drop for these conveyors. And here we go, just place it. You will see that for each of them, you will have this additional uh, object that will be positioned. So here we have a proximity switch again, here this one, and it always shows up with a small symbol. The next and se second step is actually to define the different cable trays. Now the cable trays will start at a uh, panel somewhere that you place. So this panel, you can represent it really just with a simple rectangle. So the rectangle may start basically here. This is where physically you will locate your panel. Of course, if you want to add some text, you have to add this text in here. And the size of the text here, you can see that it was really small. Why? Because we are in a 1 to 100 uh, scale. So you have to look at the font size here. You may actually want to take something a little bit bigger. And then, of course, you will see the text appear uh, in this area. Now, if it's too small, like I just have it here, it still doesn't show up. So, of course, in a 1 to 100 scale, remember, uh, 1 inch is not much. You may actually want to put it as 10 inches in terms of size. So this is exceptional to the 1 to 100 uh, scale. And here, of course, you will see the text in 10 inches. But 10 inches in this air environment here is not really big. So, um, of course, look for the topology uh, toolbar. The topology toolbar looks like this. It has a routing point. Routing points are actually entry points and outgoing points. You can actually select which symbol you want. You have the choice between a routing point or just a star like this. And it's basically an entry point to your uh, cable trace. So let's start here. And I'll just call it here, uh, let's say, uh, entry point 1 in the panel. And because it's topology, I'll just call it here T1. And then there is another uh, point here that comes very close to the first uh, conveyor. This is maybe T3. Uh, Why T3? Because I want a junction box right in this area here. Uh, roughly to actually like a splitter, right? That's going to be my T2. And I want a splitter that actually splits out to a different area in this area here, which will be my T4. Now, um, now the question is, of course, if I want to go in this area here where the table is, I might actually want to put another uh, junction or pull box in this area. I'm going to call it T5. So I have T1, T2, T3. These are actually, uh, could be 4x4 four four boxes, PVC boxes. It really depends what you assign to them. And then the next step is actually to run the different cable rungs or cable trays. So here I can actually say this is my tray number 1. Uh, the tray number 2 will actually go and link up uh, this guy here. So I could actually call it tray number 2 if I wanted to. Or I could actually say where it's going, tray number 4. You have all kinds of different ways you can actually call it. I'll call it tray number two. Uh, the next one will be tray here, number three, so TR3. And you can see that you can assign some part numbers. So this would be basically a specific tr cable tray, or it could be a PVC tube. It could be any kind of material that actually uh, is related to that portion of the tray. And you're not only limited to... Uh, to one small uh, part, you can actually assign as many parts as you want, so all the accessories and everything can be assigned to it. Now once this is done, you have to position also the terminal strips. Now again, either within the device navigator or the terminal strip, it doesn't really matter, you can actually find these terminals, these TVs, and in this particular case, you're not placing each individual terminal, you just use the terminal strip definition and you say, okay, my terminal strip number TB1 is actually going to be, let's put it in this orientation here, is inside this panel. And the same thing for my TB2. Also, I'm actually going to rotate it and place it right in this area here. So we have TB1 and TB2 that are inside this panel. Um, once this is done, you select all your items, your objects, including the routing path and the routing uh, points and you run the route topology tool. 
What this actually does, it tries to figure out where is the shortest route to go through each of these elements. Every one of these cable trays, tray 1, tray 2, th tray 3, have a specific length that was assigned to them. Uh, I'm going to try to find it here. It's actually the uh, topology routing length, if I believe that's how it's called here. And you can see that the automatic length is actually the one-to-one -one length calculated out of this uh, environment. But if you know you have to go through a few curves and you have to modify this and you say this is instead 8 meters instead of 6.2 meters, then indeed it will calculate for this length here, it will calculate 8 meters instead. So it adds up all the different lengths together from the different trays and uh, this will be transferred to either the, the wires or to the cables that are on the other side in the schematics. So here I can use the right mouse click, go to counterpiece, to jump over to the other side and of course here zoom in 100% and you will see actually the cable that is assigned here automatically has a length assigned to it and this length that came here is actually the total of all the cable trays that are put together now the beauty about this is you don't have to calculate this if you have to modify the topology you can modify it recalculate the length and it will do it for you and of course this will reflect in all the reports if you generate for instance here uh, a cable overview the cable overview will tell you exactly what the length is for each of these uh, components okay now the other thing that is also interesting is the fact that you can actually generate a new three new types of reports topology routed cables topology routed path diagrams and topology routing uh, path Link list. One is a build material that tells you what material has to be used. The other one is actually a pull list to tell you exactly from this box to this box in this tray I will have these and these wires or these and these cables. So very detailed uh, and it can help you actually to pull a certain number of cables from your uh, within your tray. So sorry about that one and there we go. Now once this is finished you are finished with your uh, routing uh, cable length. Everything is calculated for you. You don't have to worry. You can see all the lengths are assigned here in feet in this particular case. And this was the topology or cable field sys uh, system. So technically, uh, the ePlan field sys, uh, not very expensive as a module. Ask your ePlan representative to uh, see how much it uh, would save you in terms of time. I can just say it saves an enormous number of mistakes. This was Roland from ePlan Canada.